This is Inside Badger Football with head coach Trey Shucker. Financial support for Inside Badger Football comes from Turner and Turner, attorneys at law. Blake Bell of Edward Jones Investments. The accounting firm of Turner, Rogers, Manning, and Plyler. Welch Funeral Home. Roger Wingfield of State Farm Insurance. Southern Bancor. Chad Kesterson with Shelter Insurance. Southwest Sporting Goods. Taylor King and Associates. Mary and Martha's Florists and Gifts. Price and Company. Doctors Rob and Gary Rucker. Eccles, Thompson, and Ebone. Easybins.com. And Farm Bureau Insurance of Clark County. The host of Inside Badger Football is Preston Crowder. Hello and welcome to yet another week of Inside Badger Football with head coach Trey Shucker. Coach, thanks for being with us again. Uh, you guys really had some momentum going into this week, coming off two victories in your past two games, coming up with a big victory this week, 62-6 over the Bauxite Miners. Yeah, you know, it was a big game for us. It was senior night. Um, you know, it was our last scheduled game at home, so our players were really keyed up and ready to play. Uh, all right, so based on Friday night, it looked like you had a really good week of preparation going into this game, a uh, really big victory. Was that your estimation as well about your week of practice going Yeah, we, we, we did. We had a really good week of practice. Um, you know, we, it rained a couple of days, but um, we really were able to get a good week of practice in. All right, so um, I know it was senior night, like you mentioned, for your class. This senior class has really had to adjust to a lot this week. A new coaching staff coming in, and it looks like they've really adjusted well. Uh, didn't even really know if they were going to have a season going into this game with COVID-19. Uh, talk a little bit about what they've been able to do this season, really having an undefeated stretch so far uh, with so many uncertainties this year. Yeah, you know, the biggest thing um, that ever since I've gotten here was um, control what we can control. And, you know, that's how we prepare. Um, that's how uh, – we're getting ready for the next step, and you know our, the next step every week is is the game. Um, so that's the only thing we can control. Um, you know we can do the best we can. We we'll stay away from COVID. You know keeping social distancing and all that. But at the end of the day, um, you know that's out of our hands. So, and I know it had to be special Friday night. It was a senior night, and it's our last regular season home game. And they came up with a big victory. I know it's always special getting that win the last time you take uh, the field on in Badger Stadium. Yeah, you know it was a really, you know a lot of people touched the ball. It was really big for our team. Uh, got everybody in the game. Um, so everybody got game reps, and that's huge um, for progression. Um, so you see a lot of different people touching the football, a lot of people in a, in a lot of different situations, a lot of different people making big plays. It was a really great team, team win. All right, so we're going to jump into these highlights here uh, from last Friday against the Box Out Miners. You guys did receive uh, this time, so you got the opening kickoff. Yeah, you know, anytime we can receive the football, uh, we want our offense to go out and set the tone for the entire rest of the game. Um, you know, our first drive really wasn't what we want it to be. Uh, we didn't have a great start, in my opinion. Um, you know, we see we're moving the football a little bit. Um, just had some turnovers, some I mean, uh, had some drops, um, had a couple penalties that kind of stalled us out. Really wasn't what the first drive that we wanted, but we were able to turn it on as the game got going. Now, Braden Thomas doing a good job going through his progression and found Alex Loy. Offensive line played great all night, I thought. Um, you see uh, Buster getting flushed right here, but um, really, I thought he could have had a stepped up and, and delivered the football. But you know, being a good athlete, he he can pull it and go anytime he wants. You know, he's a senior. We give him that opportunity, and he does a great job of it. Now, what was the game plan offensively? Were you were you looking to run it, pass it? We saw a misplay here, but what was what was really the game plan at the beginning of the game? The beginning of the game, you know, we wanted to be balanced. Um, any any time um, going into the game, we want to be as balanced as possible. You know, with our run and pass game. Um, but it just ended up being, you know, we scored more passing touchdowns than we did rushing, but um, we want to be as balanced as possible. Here we see Jason Davis, another big run. Um, you know, it, it really can open things up when you have him being able to hand off the ball to him. It can open things up for your receivers and, and Buster Thomas going through the air. Yeah, and you know, you see uh, defenses start to put extra people in the box to try to stop him, um, and that's kind of what you have to do. He's, he's such a big physical runner. Uh, you need extra bodies in the box to be able to get him to the ground. 
So you guys come up with a big stop on defense, get the ball back, now driving again uh, here in the red zone. And another good pass there from Buster Thomas for his first, first touchdown pass, first of many on the night. Right, Buster Thomas did a great job getting the ball out of his hands quick, making the right reads, the right throws. Uh, really, he's playing at a really impressive level right now. So you guys are up 7-0 on the kickoff. Thought that one may drop at, at the one yard line, maybe just stop rolling, but it did roll in the end zone. So they get the ball out of the 25. Yeah. So right here, our, our defense is playing, uh, playing solid. They have been all year. Um, you know, we've got a really solid defense. A lot of physical football players over there. We've got quite a few seniors over there that, you know, provide a lot of good senior leadership. And box Lights ground game was, was, was really working a little bit early on this first drive. They didn't really go through the air much. I'm sure you guys were expecting that. Yeah, you know, going into the game, we, we thought they were going to throw the ball a little bit more than they actually did. Um, but, you know, they came out running the football, trying, trying to get something on the ground, which we were okay with. We knew that we felt really good about stopping the run first. And, you know, if we were expecting them to throw a little bit more. But right here, um, just a missed assignment by the secondary. I'm not not run fitting correctly, but we got that fixed and that was the only score of the night for them. Yeah, one big play for them, but you guys come up with the block PAP, PAT, excuse me, so you still have a 7-6 lead. Yeah, so we'd worked on that also all week in practice. Um, we figured that if we were in that position, we can get a, get a block. You guys get the ball back. Still looking to get something through the air. Buster Thomas, again, a great game for him the other night. Um, talk a little bit about what he was able to do for your team on Friday. One of the biggest things that Buster does and has done all year up to this point is take care of the football. Um, you know, he finished the night with no turnovers. Um, you know, he did a great job of escaping the pocket, getting out, making, making plays with his legs. He extended some plays. And you see him really feeling comfortable at that quarterback position, making a good decision right there, just getting the ball out of his hands. So the hole pushes you back, but still looking to drive. And again, Buster Thomas getting outside of the pocket, looking to make something happen. Um, they did have him contained a little bit there, but in, now we're in the second quarter. You guys still driving? Yeah, we're, so Buster doing a great job of making plays with his legs and extending plays. Uh, keeps the football moving down the field. Good play here, good pass right there to Kyler Pfeiffer. He, he's looking to make something happen, and, and you can really be versatile with him as he's uh, really quick and athletic, and he hits the sideline for his uh, first touchdown of the night. Yeah, uh, Kyler Pfeiffer had a great game. Um, Right there, we had a, a, a screen designed for him. He was able to get out in space and get in the end zone. So 14-6 Badgers right here, still in the second quarter. And again, Box is still going with their ground game. Yeah, you know, our, def our uh, defensive line and our linebackers are playing really well. They had a really great game. They're really getting a lot of pressure on the quarterback in, in passing situations. Did a really good job of controlling the line of scrimmage early, controlling the line of scrimmage for the rest of the game. but. Um, that was the plan going into it. We wanted to control the last range. Another big pass there from Buster Thomas, the first down. And once again, it, it just seemed like the, the Miners really didn't have an answer for you guys offensively all night long. Yeah, we wanted to push the football down the field. We thought we um, had the matchups that we wanted in the passing game, and, and it turned out to be true. Uh, but we knew that we did want to push the football down the field. Jay Sean with another big run. Anytime they lighten the box, they've got to account for him. Keeper keeper thought Buster may have been able to turn up and turn up field and get the first down, but uh, that was on third down, fourth down play here, and uh, you guys get the first down anyway. Right, and you know, if it's fourth down, if it's close, you know, we feel good about going for it. Right here is a great throw by, by Buster Thomas to Braylon Bailey. Braylon Bailey had a huge night himself. Uh, he had he counted for three touchdowns, two through the air. He rushed for one. Um, Braylon's just one of those fit, uh, versatile football players on our team, able to play multiple positions. So 21-6, Badgers here with the lead, still in the second quarter. And uh, the kickoff there again, thought it may stop on the one or two yard line, but it rolled out of bounds. And here we see a, a great interception there from Latonio Hughes. Yeah, this is a great job by Latonio, keeping his eyes right, making sure that, um, you know, they did try to window dress a little bit with the motion, mm -hmm. trying to get our eyes wrong, but he did a great job of playing sound football, understanding that it's a pass, uh, was able to get to his receiver, make a play on the football. Handing off here to Jay Sean Davis, big run for him. Jay Sean's just so hard to bring down. And, and the thing is, if you get a little too over anxious, uh, uh, I've said this before, um, he, can, he can hurt you uh, with his quickness as well. It's not just that he's, he's really big and strong, but he's, he's really quick also. He is, he's elusive and uh, you know, it's deceptive because he is so big. Right another big strike by, by Buster Thomas to Kyler Pfeiffer. Um, 
Kyler's just playing, ver running vertical right there, outruns the, the secondary. 28-6, great play there, knocking the pass to the ground. And again, we see, we see the miners just trying, really with the QB keepers and the, the handoffs to their running back, uh, just trying to make something happen on the ground. Here, fourth down, uh, backed up in their own territory. They're down early, but they, they opted to go for it, and they get the first down. Yeah, you know, they did go for it quite a few times in the football game early. They did convert, um, you know, they did try to pound the football. Um, they, they ran it a lot more than what we thought. Um, we did feel good about it, but um, it was kind of different than what we'd seen in the previous games. Now we saw you send Trey Blitzer right here. You're blitzing here again. Uh, how, how do you feel comfortable uh, sending your linebackers uh, at the quarterback? Absolutely. You know, Coach, Coach Grimmett does a great job of designing the defense to, to get ma mismatches. Um, we want to get pressure on the quarterback. We want to make it uncomfortable for him. And uh, he does a great job of designing things to, to bring pressure from different ways. So late in the first half here, looking to drive, maybe get one more touchdown before the end of the half, end of the half still leading 28 to six. Yeah, so right here, Buster doing a great job pushing the football down the field. That's Pre Preston DeMauro mm -hmm. playing fast at receiver. Biggest thing we were talking to him about uh, going into that drive was we need to push the football, play fast. Let's see if they can cover us deep. And here you hand it off to Jay Sean Davis for uh, one of his touchdowns on the night. So PAT is good. You're ahead 35 to six going into the halftime break as Boxite uh, runs one play here to run out the clock. But you got to feel really good heading into the halftime break. Yeah, we felt really good about it. You know, uh, the score is what it was. My my speech to the, our guys at halftime was, I don't care what the score is. I want us to go out and execute our plays. Um, you know. In my head, I figured that we can get some extra guys in as the game progressed, and I wanted those guys to know uh, we want to execute our football yeah. plays. We want to execute at a high level. It doesn't matter who's in the game. So Boxside gets the ball first. Great job there by your defense swimming the football. Yeah, that's what we want. We want all 11 uh, red jerseys in this situation to the football. Um, we want all, all 11 batters to get to the football and, and swarm. And we saw the, the Miners switch quarterbacks going into the second half. Is that something – uh, when they switched quarterbacks, did you guys think they were maybe going to throw the ball a little bit more than they did in the first half? Uh, you know, we, we, did, we didn't really know. We just kind of wanted to play our defense and, and stay true to our game plan. There you see Trey Bledsoe going towards the quarterback again. And they, the Miners, again, did throw a little bit more in the second half, but still just a great job by your defense there. And that was a fourth down play, so you guys do get the ball back with a really good field position. Yeah, really good field position. Um, you know, we felt good about doing a few different things in the second half. We still tried to, wanted to push the football down the field. Really good job uh, by Alex Lloyd working back to the ball and drawing that penalty. And then Buster Thomas again rolling out, making something happen with his legs. Even just, even just picking up a few yards when you're rolling out, it's still a big play. That's right. And that's one of the things that Braden does the best at is extending those plays. And, you know, that's really hard on a defense. Mm -hmm. They always have to account for him. So he gets the first down with his legs and then through the air, touchdown pass, uh, bringing the score to 42 to six. Big, big score there by your defense, or by your offense, excuse me. And another good coverage there on the kickoff. Yeah, so right there is, uh, after that score is when we want to start getting some extra guys in, mm -hmm. get some good playing experience from some of those guys that haven't really got it much this season. And uh, so you'll start seeing some new faces and new numbers coming into the game. Um, and they're still playing at a high level. And that's what we wanted, and that's what I challenged our guys at halftime. And that score did implement the good sportsmanship rule, so the clock was continuously running throughout the second half. Um, Blitz in there, uh, good job there by your defense. Another fourth down play here. And blocks like going through the air. Good pressure again by your defense, though. Yeah, now, like I said, it, that's what we want to do on defense. We want to make it uncomfortable for the quarterback to, to do his role, you know, whether that's run or pass. We want to make the offense uncomfortable. And now we see Donovan Witten in at quarterback, um, usually starting at linebacker, but he hands it off here to Brandon Bailey and he scores a touchdown. Yeah, so right here we started rotating some guys in, got some extra guys in some different spots. Braylon right there with a really good run for a touchdown. So that makes it 48 to six, still in the third quarter. The PAT was no good, so it's 48 to six. Uh, box height with the ball yet again. Now, now defensively, as we see the, the bad snap here, and you guys picked that one up, uh, scoring another touchdown, making it 
50, uh, 55 to 6. Did the, defensively, were you able to get some guys in also, not just offense, but defense? As yeah, well? so right there, that was Zane Thomason. Uh, he comes and rotates in at our linebacker spot. Zane Thompson with the scoop and score, really huge for him, mm -hmm. being able to get that play in, in that situation. Playing at a high level, you know, we talk about getting to the football, and that's part of that. 55 6 now in the fourth quarter, box site with the ball still going on the ground and still with their uh, new quarterback in the game, uh, the one that started in the second half. Yep, so you start to see a lot of new numbers in the game, especially in the box. Uh, a lot of new defensive linemen, a lot of new linebackers. Uh, we start rotating some secondary guys in, but right there is Ollie Ware making a big play on the football. He's one of our starters. He's playing at a really high level also. Really pleased with how he's progressed over the course of the season. And even though some of your defensive backs may not be quite as tall as some of the receivers they're defending, they have the athleticism to be able to jump and defend well. That's the thing is we want to take away the space from the receivers. Right there is a huge hit by Brock Curry on, on fourth down. That was great to see by him uh, playing aggressive. Right here we've got Alan Buckley running the football. Uh, he had a really great game. <laughs> um, very proud of Alan Buckley on, on how he played. And we see Donald Witten a good play there, running with the football for first down down inside the 10-yard line. And then from here, uh, you're looking to hand it off to Alan Buckley uh, inside of the 10-yard line. Yeah, so right here, wanted to keep the ball on the ground. Alan Buckley, we, we knew that we can get him a get him a touchdown and he runs hard right here. Um, great job by him, great job by the offensive linemen continuing on in sustaining their blocks and we were able to punch it in with our second group. So kicking off here just about towards the end of the game, a couple minutes left, box out going to uh, run a couple plays again. The clock was continuously, run, continuously running uh, throughout most of the second half. So uh, you guys just getting a few more plays in here, getting some more stops, and uh, looking to end this one with another big victory against the 7-4-8 team. It is. It, it was a big one for us. Um, you know, gave us gave our entire team a lot of confidence moving into this last conference game against Malvern. You know, with the second group in, you still see a lot of red jerseys getting to the football, and that's what we wanted to see all night. Yeah. Well, it was, it was a great win, Coach, and I know you've mentioned it, but, but a lot of the younger players really got a lot of opportunities uh, to get in, whether it's the sophomores or the juniors. And, and I know that's really big going forward, especially towards next year, and even if you need some guys to step up heading towards playoff time. Right. Getting that, that experience, that game experience for a lot of different guys is huge for us. You know, you never know what can happen with injuries, COVID, um, just whatever situations there are. Um, so getting some guys extra game experience allows us to see what they can do in a game time situation, giving them more confidence, giving us confidence in them to be able to get the job done. All right, so now we're going to head into the players of the week, uh, some, some really good ones, some, some guys we may not have seen before uh, this week. On offense, Matthew Porter, he's an offensive lineman. A lot of times those guys don't get talked about enough uh, as they really should, and he had a really good game Friday. Matthew Porter had a great game. He had 13 knockdowns, which is finished blocks, and that's what we wanted to see uh, moving forward. You know, our offensive line has progressed really well over the course of the season. Going into the season, they hadn't had a lot of experience, yep. but by now they do. Um, they've got almost a full season under their belt, and you know they're doing a great job. Uh, Matthew Porter's leading the way with that. All right, um, defense, Latonio Hughes picked up a big interception. He's, he's really coming into his own as we see the season progress. He's only a sophomore. He's got really a lot of potential. Yeah, he's a sophomore with a high ceiling. He's playing at a really high level. Um, you know, he had two tackles, one uh, tackle for a loss. He also had an interception on the night, and he had a pass breakup. Um, you know, he's, he's only a sophomore, but he's one of the most athletic players we have on our football team. Yep, and uh, special team is Braylon Bailey. Usually uh, we see him uh, making, uh, making his mark on the game offensively, but this time it was on special teams. Yeah, so Braylon Bailey had a great night overall. Yeah. Um, you, you know, we talked earlier about, you know, he had three touchdowns, but um, on special teams was, you know, where he really shined, in my opinion. Um, he had four tackles, which was huge. He was flying down the field, making, making plays. He also had a 28-yard return. And, uh, you know, Braylon's one of those versatile players that he's all over the field, and he's a big part of the special teams as well. All right, so now we're going to move into the Badger Spirit Award. That was Alan Buckley this week. Uh, really big for him to get that award. I know um, he comes in and works hard every single day, so that's got to be a really special for him. He does a great job. He's progressed so much over the course of the season. You know, he's a, he's a young one too for us. He's a sophomore. Um, you know, he runs our scout team, plays any position that we want him to. He does a great job, never complains about anything. Has worked really hard. He had four carries, 21 yards, and a touchdown on the night. Um, you know, it was really exciting to see him be able to do that, and he's, he deserves it. Um, you know, he's, he works really hard for our scout team. That's great. So now we're going to go into scores of the week. Uh, really some, some 7-4-A scores. 
Uh, we've had Fountain Lake defeating Haskell Harmony Grove 33 to seven. A uh, big one here, Joe T. Robinson defeating Ashdown only by eight points in overtime. And then Nashville uh, coming away with a 42 to 12 victory over Malvern. We've, we've said it before, the 7-4 is a tough conference and you can see it. Um, there's a lot of good teams. Uh, the Badgers are obviously a very good team. Nashville, Joe T., Ashdown, Malvern, all very good teams, uh, especially when we're heading into the playoffs. Yeah, you know, it's, it's the toughest conference in, in 4A. Anything can happen on any night, uh, especially with COVID. Um, you never know who you're going to get, who's going to be on the field. Um, but, you know, it's a dogfight every night. You know, the Joe T game, Joe T. Ashdown is, a, is, a, is an indicator of that. Yep. Um, it came all, all the way down to the wire in, in overtime. Um, and so uh, as, we're, as we're looking ahead to, towards the rest of the season, and we're moving to the playoffs. It's really a weird year for the playoffs. Uh, the COVID guidelines in place. So uh, since one team in the, in the Class 4A um, of Arkansas football has missed games to COVID, everyone now gets a chance to c compete in the playoffs unless you decide to opt out. So uh, I know the bracket isn't released until Saturday, but I, but um, just looking ahead of that, I'm sure you guys are really just prepared for anything uh, moving forward towards the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. so we don't know what the bracket looks like. Um, we're, we know what kind of seeds we're looking at. Um, the winner of this week will, will be the three seed. Uh, the loser will be the five seed. Um, don't know who we would play. Don't know if it's a road game or, or what, but um, you know, it's a big game for us. It means a lot. Uh, moving forward into the playoffs. Yeah, and again, that bracket does come out Saturday, so be on the lookout for that after all the games are finalized on Friday. Um, move, looking towards this Friday, Malvern Leopards uh, heading up to Malvern. A big rivalry game always is. Malvern Leopards are four and five, three and three in conference. They did lose last week, 42 to 12, to the Nashville Scrappers. Um, like I said, a rivalry game, always uh, really fun when the Badgers and the Leopards get together. Uh, it's going to be a big game this week. It's, it, is, it is. It's a huge game. Like I said, it's, it's for the three seed or, or the five seed. Mm -hmm. um, winner takes three, loser takes five. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a big, big confidence game going into the playoffs and, and setting yourself up with the seed. Yep. So. Um, so looking ahead to that, how are, how are we preparing for that? I know you may not want to give too much away, but uh, just like what offense uh, is Malvern are really comfortable running defensively? What will we see from, uh, from the Leopards? Yeah, so defensively they run a 4-3 defense, 4-3 um, cover two. Um, they might roll down and do some different things. Um, they like to bring pressure a little bit in certain situations, but um, you know, they play aggressive, they really do. Um, offensively they run spread. They've got a really good quarterback. He's a sophomore, but um, he's playing really well right now. I think he's leading the, the conference right now in, in statistics, um, but he's doing a great job with what they do. Great coach. So we uh, hope to see you back again next week after a victory. If you aren't able to go uh, up to Malvern and catch the Badgers and the Leopards this Friday, we will have that game for you. ArkadelphiaBadgerTV.com slash broadcast. For ticket information, you can always go to Badger Athletics Facebook page or at APSD underscore athletics on Twitter. Again, coach, thanks for being with us. Hope to see you next week after another Badger victory. Go Badgers. Go Badgers. Sponsors of Inside Badger Football include Chad Kesterson with Shelter Insurance, Southwest Sporting Goods, Taylor King and Associates, Mary and Martha's Florist and Gifts, Price and Company, Doctors Rob and Gary Rucker, Eccles, Thompson and Ebo, Farm Bureau Insurance of Clark County, Turner and Turner, Attorneys at Law, EasyBins.com, Blake Bell of Edward Jones Investments, the accounting firm of Turner, Rogers, Manning and Plyler, Welch Funeral Home, Roger Wingfield of State Farm Insurance, and Southern Bancor. Inside Badger Football is produced each week by Washita Baptist University's Rogers Department of Communications.